What's going on, everyone? So we had an amazing live stream and an amazing article post yesterday where we got to talk about all the new cards. I think there was like 10 of them with a couple of spoilers from unique channels out there. Too bad I can't get my own little exclusive spoiler. That would be sweet, uh, maybe in the future. But I want to talk about the bad batches. We kind of got the completed squad with the exception of one. Crosshair was kind of spoiled uh, like two or three weeks ago. So we're only missing Wrecker at this point of me recording, but the rest of the Bad Batch is here. And well, they look sweet, but kind of a very different play style than, you know, I was expecting. And we'll see based on my initial impressions and your initial impressions, what you all think of it. But Hunter, let's start off with Hunter. He is a command heroism leader. Not surprised that Hunter is the leader for any of you that watch Bad Batch. I very much expected a Hunter leader um, card. We have an action ability that costs one resource, and then you get to reveal a resource you control. If it shares a name with a friendly, unique unit, return the resource to its owner's hand and put the top card of your deck into play as a resource. Now, I... Uh, I am not 100% sure if this is immediately readied or not. Generally speaking, when they, you know, talk about resources and, and readying them, um, they specifically mention that. Um, if you look at, for example, Han Solo, um, we can pull up, I'll just pull up Han Solo here. It says, put a card into play as a resource and ready it. So I lean towards the fact that this won't ready a resource which means that you don't get the resource back that you spent on the action ability that is my initial impression if there is you know something strange going on and then maybe i am incorrect about that then it could be a lot better so remember this is just going to cost you one resource to do this and you do need a unique unit on the battlefield and you need a unique unit that you've already resourced early on into the game or during some point in the game to even use this ability so it's a very very niche ability and the backside of hunter here is a 5-8 deploys on seven resources with overwhelm and instead of it being an action ability now it is just an on attack trigger so on attack you get to potentially reveal a resource you control and if it shares the name is the same from the unique unit you get to go ahead and return that resource to its owner's hand so let's talk about first off on this um backside the fact that it is a seven deploy leader. That is a huge, a huge downside. If we look at the higher costed leaders, one of the big things that they need to have is some way to impact the board a very, very large amount. If you look at like Emperor Palpatine, you look at Darth Vader, those are kind of the two quintessential ones that are higher resources, but do something so spectacular that people want to build around them. Hunter here, isn't really doing that he is just giving you incremental value as a lot of other earlier leaders that you deploy will do as well and not to mention the thing that he's doing requires you to have other unique units set up as well as you to benefit from returning resources from your resource pile to your hand which there are some other cards in the bad batch that do but we need to set that whole thing up so I'm not 100% convinced about the fact that he is a seven deploy leader. He's also a five eight, same as Darth Vader, but Darth Vader gets the two damage on attack, which is huge. That is a huge difference. So I'm not 100% convinced by the backside of Hunter. As for the leader ability, well, realistically, if I was just to tell you, you know, what I think about it immediately, I would say this is just a horrible leader ability. It doesn't do anything for you. It sets you behind on resources without giving you a, a noticeable advantage. Why would you want to return some sort of resource from your resource pile when you already have the unique unit out on the battlefield? You can't play it again, for example. So that means you just have a backup copy, but it's going to be a lower costed uh, character or card because you would have already had it on the battlefield when you reveal your resource that you control and you probably resourced it for a reason like all these things don't really add up in my mind um uh, yes you could turn some, uh, return something like luke to your hand and get another uh etb or a, a when deployed trigger but those things don't really really add up in my mind however when we start talking about the other bad batch it starts to make sense so i want to dive into some of the other cards that we got um revealed here next one is tech um so tech is pretty sweet he is a three resource heroism round unit two five and each friendly resource gains smuggle 
the gained smuggle cost is that card's cost plus two and its aspect icons and so for example if you were to have let's say i don't know a surprise strike as your resource you can now cast a surprise strike for four resources and the cutting tag or the cutting aspect so you would still need to be in that correct aspect but essentially what this allows you to do is you play tech and you can replay any of your resource cards for you uh in the late game just by adding on a two resource tax how powerful is this because i've seen a lot of people say wow this is absolutely absurd i can't believe this card is even printed i am really not high on this card I think a lot of people are exaggerating or a lot of people look at this and exaggerate how strong smuggle or the ability to smuggle any of your resources is in the late game. Yes, you could drop this in the late game and you get a lot of value on it potentially, right? You could cast or uh, you could deploy a lot of different cards in your resource zone if you have the resources to do so. But remember, you're playing a three resource two five, which isn't like terrible, but it's not exciting and you need to be able to get to that resource amount to take advantage of all of your resource pile being additional cards in your hand there are not many times in star wars unlimited when you're playing a longer game and uh, let's say you're playing against more mid-range or control deck where they won't just outvalue with the cards that they have in hand not needing something like a tech if you're trying to rely on tech to give you that late game advantage you're probably losing already because you are paying extra resources for cards that are a little bit weaker than your opponent's cards and if you're playing him in let's say a more controlling deck well it's way too slow for you to actually get that advantage rather than just playing those cards naturally inside of your deck there are some cases where he's going to be good don't get me wrong i don't think he's absolutely terrible but i don't think he is this powerhouse that people um, are initially thinking about i'm interested to see what he's capable of and i do think that there could be some interesting synergies when we get the rest of the set um especially if you know there's some smuggle like payoffs right like a card that says whenever you smuggle a card do something or um if you were to smuggle a card or smuggle costs x less or whatever like that that type of synergy could be interesting to me but until we see that i'm not hugely impressed at the current moment this also if we look back on hunter does it really feel like it synergizes with hunter as hunter returns those cards to your hand and then allows you to replay them potentially whereas tech wants you to keep them in the resource pile and then smuggle them out so don't really see a bunch of synergy with hunter however the next one is echo and this is where i see a big big payoff Okay, this is where I see this, this, you know, bad batch potentially, or, you know, maybe we just play all these cards in separate decks, but Echo specifically, I am very, very hopeful for. He's a four resource command heroism four four. Pretty solid stats to start off with restore to, and this is where it gets exciting. When played, you may discard a card from your hand, give two experience tokens to a unit in play with the same name as the discarded card. So this is where you start to see some synergies with Hunter. And this is really one of the big cards that I'm excited about. So Hunter on the previous turn, let's say you have multiple two resource plays that are, you know, um, unique units, and then you resource one of them. A lot of this happens in, in, in Star Wars in the middle already. Let's say you have two Sabines, for example, you resource one, you keep the other because you're going to play on turn one. Now, let's say you want to keep the Sabine in hand. You play out Sabine um, and maybe you, and you don't even have to keep Sabine in hand, but let's say you play out Sabine, you play a three, you drop uh, three resource play, and then you play Echo, you discard your Sabine and you make your other Sabine a four or five. That is sweet. Or you could even do something like, let's say I play out Sabine, Next turn, um, I've already resourced my previous Sabine and it, and it lines up where I have another two resource play. Like I play an A-Wing or whatever. And then I use Hunter's action ability to return Sabine to my hand in order for me to line up my Echo to get a massive bonus to my Sabine. Mind you, mind you, that uh, this does not have to be a unique unit. However, Hunter does. Uh, so you can see reveal resource you control if it shares the same name with a friendly unique unit so hunter must interact with unique units but echo does not and so you could do something like 
play an echo base defender <laughs> on turn three keep one in your hand and then on turn four or on turn two you play an echo base defender and then on turn three you discard your other echo base defender and make a, a six five echo base defender right that type of situation could be very very impactful this seems absurd to me getting six power six toughness and restore two across multiple bodies on turn three is really powerful so i think echo is the most exciting of the cards that we've seen just in how the meta shapes up right now um perhaps i'll be you know singing a different tune in the future but i think echo here is the most exciting that we've seen however we also have omega and we have omega um which is pretty interesting because she kind of gives you a hint as to what the secondary aspect ought to be for hunter which is cutting and she is a cunning heroism ground unit here she is a 2-2 and she says ignore the aspect penalty on the first clone unit you play each round and then when played search the top five cards of your deck for a clone card reveal it and draw it so this is pretty cool um now if i were to go ahead and pull up the star wars unlimited cards that we have right now of course there's going to be more in the future right there's going to be more let me just pull this up real quick um let me just whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. Um, if we type in clone, here's Crosshair, right? He is already command. Um, he's command villainy, in fact. So you could ignore the aspect penalty on this, which I do think this card is pretty powerful. We have, um, oh, let me close that. Clone Deserter, which will fit into the command style because it's Hunter, right? If you're going to play Hunter as your, um, you know, deck leader, your, your, your leader for your deck. We have Wolf, which is aggression. And that also kind of, would work because you kind of want to play cunning in order for you to play omega on turn two in order or turn one in order for you to benefit from the ignore aspect penalty so the cards that we see so far are crosshair and wolf there's going to be more clones i imagine in the set but already i think crosshair is a really nice payoff for omega i think this card is very very powerful and uh that means that you kind of get some decent value out of omega and because you're going to be able to search the top five cards for your clones, you could potentially stack up multiple clones in order to benefit from like Echo's when playing ability to get you the two experience tokens, which I think synergizes with Echo quite nicely. The only issue I see is that it kind of has the same issue as a lot of other two resource tutus. You are just going to get outclassed by every single unit on the battlefield for the most part two threes beat it three threes beat it um in some cases even two twos beat it two two shield it like crafty smuggler right so i'm not really happy about the the body that you're getting the thing that i'm interested in is the fact that it's like a mon mothma type card um if we have enough clones and again there is a high chance that we will right we've only seen like 10 percent of the set so i'm going to assume that this card is going to get like mon mothma consistency where when you're going to search you're guaranteed to get a clone card and if you're guaranteed to get a clone card i don't mind this card that much um in a lot of matchups as again a 2-2 is fine if you're replacing itself for a card that you can set up your future turns and potentially synergize with other mechanics that we have such as echo for example that's the card that i'm really looking at as again if you pick up another omega for example you can make omega into a 4-4 which is really nice and if they don't deal with it immediately then they're going to be quite sad of course this gives you you know gives away information i should say so if you reveal a clone card that they already have on the battlefield they're probably going to be like oh they might deploy echo and really mess me up but i'm i'm open to this one there might also be a different aspect like i could see wrecker being an aggression card and if wrecker is like an aggression card then you know you might see um omega here be even more useful because you want to play wrecker because he's a huge payoff but he's in a separate aspect as hunter and omega um we will see of course we don't even have to play these cards by the way in the hunter deck if you're gonna play omega i think that it Kind of makes a little bit more sense but again someone like um echo which we talked about earlier i think this could just straight up go into potentially like sabine um green aggro right and then just get a lot of value out of him um so next up we have well that kind of wraps up the bad batch for today but next up we have cripple authority as the next card here a two resource event aggression heroism card draw a card each opponent who controls more resources than you discards a card from their hand 
pretty interesting i do think this ends up being a little bit more of an aggressive card rather than a mid-range or control card as basically anytime you're a mid-range or a control deck you're going to be resourcing every single turn and there's a high chance that you're going to have the most resources on the battlefield but i could see this really getting double effect in like the more aggressive decks when you might refuse to resource one turn and now they're a resource ahead or i suppose you can end up being in a situation where you uh let's say just have your opponent resupply or super laser technician and then you have a, a resource down is this a good card to like really get a lot of value out of i don't think so i don't think you should be playing cripple authority in your deck for the most part it is like if you're cat if you're using this like in the middle stages of the game when you are falling behind and you need more cards in your hand making your opponent discard is a nice little upside there's a good chance they're going to discard a card that doesn't matter as much as there's very rare times when a control or mid-range deck has less than two cards in hand okay if they have one card in hand yeah you can pick up their last card and then they're on the top of their library um and hopefully are top of their deck and hopefully they don't draw well right but there's a very very good chance they're gonna have multiple cards in hand and that means that you're probably not gonna get their strongest card and this just doesn't seem very appealing to me using resources to do something like this oftentimes means that you're just going to be losing because your opponents are playing more powerful cards in that mid to late game if you're a more aggressive deck and that's where i think this ends up fitting the most so not really super convinced it's kind of like um the six resource one where if you hit their base they have to discard two cards you draw two cards but on a smaller version i do think that, that this card is better than that card just because it's cheaper but i don't think it actually ends up in a lot of decks or probably will not end up in a lot of decks lastly we have death watch loyalist this card is pretty sweet um so he is a three three grit aggression villainy three resource ground unit with overwhelm pretty basic right just has some keywords in grit and overwhelm and it's just a three three this guy looks pretty good uh the thing i'm really excited about is a another card for grand inquisitor so that's the first thing i thought of immediately as this one can immediately ready and attack as a five powered unit on turn two <laughs> which is kind of absurd mind you you can even uh, kill an opponent's unit and then hit their base for some good chunks of damage because of overwhelm as well so uh, that's the thing that i immediately thought of outside of that of course we've seen some mandalorians already um however it doesn't really synergize with the other mandalorians that we've seen since it's a villainy unit but they said they're going to be adding some additional villainy mandalorian units i am more just excited about uh them kind of printing some really really cool mandalorian style cards i always like the mandalorians i'm a very very biased uh person towards mandalorian since um they're like the prominent theme in the old knights of the republic games so i just love seeing mandalorian cards in general even though they don't necessarily match the same armor style or the same style of general or the same mentality regardless i just think it's sweet to have these cards but i think this card is actually quite strong and i could see um this just being played as a solid three resource play if you're able to get the crit activated at all um, and it becomes a four two that could be really really strong but i definitely think it leans more aggressively slanted haha ah, it's aggression card it's aggressively slanted than anything else like i don't think you play this as a defensive card uh in your more like mid-rangey control deck i think this is more like okay i want to get the grit rolling and i want to hit in for some big chunks of damage and that's where you know grand inquisitor comes in this is a card this is a card for grand inquisitor guys this is the best card i've seen for grand inquisitor so pretty sweet uh but that's gonna wrap up all of the spoilers that uh, i have seen today my final thoughts on the Bad Batch is I'm as the they print all these cards and we still have to see record as I mentioned, but um, I I'm more convinced that you're going to be playing a lot of these cards just not with Hunter. Um, I don't actually think Hunter is a very good leader, even with you know Echo and being able to return a unique unit and then discard that unique unit to give some extra experience tokens. Like that's a decent synergy, and I do think that's pretty powerful. Um, but I just think that it's just better to play Echo with a leader that actually does more things and then discard something that you happen to have in your hand. 
right you can even play this on a later turn and then maybe like double you know you, you do two separate things in a turn like on turn five for example when you have six resources you could play echo and then you could play a two resource play following that up in order for you to get that value potentially you've saved um a card or whatever heck you can even you could even discard echo to its ability uh and then make it a six six on turn three which is absurd so echo is by far the one i'm most excited about followed up by death watch loyalist i think this card again immediately i think of grand inquisitor um the other cards i'm kind of excited about in terms of seeing the rest of the set particularly tech and omega i think these two cards are really needing to see the rest of the set to really get a proper evaluation from them but as i go further and, and see all the spoilers of course we'll return back to these cards and talk to them about them a little bit more and then lastly uh cripple authority i'm just not really impressed with um card advantage in this game i don't think it ends up being uh or equating to more wins than than you know just kind of wasting resources a lot of the time so let me know what you think in the comments section down below i know that a lot of people are excited about tech as well uh, i'm excited to hear your thoughts but thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you all for the next one